Okay, this is now the official start of the King Supers Tracker vlog. I had just, uh, this is my first time recording, so I had just recorded a 20 minute video, just kind of going over the project. Um, but unfortunately, I was doing some testing. So I was testing with this mic or my webcam mic, and I ended up deciding my webcam mic was better, but I forgot to switch. So now I'm fucked, and I have to re-record the whole thing. And yeah, I am probably not going to do that. But essentially, the problem, let's see, maybe it won't occur. It didn't actually happen last time. But I just get this issue with signing in due to bot detection. Yep. As you can see, we get that, uh, this thing. And that is not actually like, yeah, I get this response. And this is because of being bot tracked or they know I'm a bot. And I've been unable to get it to consistently sign in. Or like... <laughs> This is an accurate username and password, but as you can see, I mean, I'm getting a 403, um, but I actually did check, and uh, when you send in a bad username, it gives you a 200 still, and it, it just tells you that that was an incorrect username and password, so. So they're blocking me, bot detection, so it's just not going to work to scrape the site like that, so what I'm thinking instead is maybe a half and half model so what i think i'll do is create a chrome extension that can that will navigate to kingsupers.com slash my purchases okay so this is what it would do i'm going to show you what this would look like so because it, i'm not signed in it'll auto redirect me to the login page so right like they can open some extension like Something like, like, I guess you can't see it because of my face, actually. <laughs> but something like this. It's so cool now that I know how these tools work, or they're not even that complicated. It's very, very easy. I guess I'll just move my face here. Now I like it over here, actually. Um, so, so, right, and then all they'd have to do is type in their username and password. Great, and yeah, I actually discovered a great approach because initially I was going to like scrape by opening all of these different order details and then the the, the uh, puppeteer was going to go in here and, you know, get this, get this data, get this data from here. Um, but then I realized like if we had a hundred orders, it would probably be too much memory um, because like, right i only have five orders so sure it works for me but maybe somebody could have a hundred that would not work um just one problem with that so then you know i thought maybe i'd have to then you know this page is just gonna have to go to a mall but i think a much better approach right is to so you know this thing is using ajax to get its data and like here's the uh here's the endpoint that they call. So here's where they're getting the data from. Um, and it's just better. Or like, here's my data. Like if you look here at the end, the fifth element, you can see here items. And you can see here this item detail, Sara Lee bimbo, Sara Lee classic white bread. It's weird, Sara Lee bimbo. But then, right, I can see the, uh, Sara Lee, and I'm sure if I go to number one, it should be a Pringle. Yep. So, see, I can get the data. Um, <laughs> the data. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then, like, what I will have to do, though, is that the, the JSON that that API gets is only from for this one page. So, as you can see, as I navigate, boom. Here's the next chunk of orders. So I'll need to automate pressing, but this is such a better approach. I just have to listen for this request and I get the, the data immediately and it's already in a JSON. So, yep. So yeah, what I'm going to be working on is getting that extension to 
try and save all of these to disk. And if I can get that working, you know, then the next step would be to, or you know, later down the road, it would eventually, I guess, just post those uh, order details to my web server, which would then store it in a database so I then have it. And then I don't have to scrape all the time, only when I'm getting the new data. So then, you know, every any user would only have to do this manual process every time they want to refresh their data. But it doesn't seem that bad to me to just click up here, something, and then, you know, great, navigate to the, to the sign in, sign in, and then just take over from there. Doesn't seem like a lot of steps where I'd be willing to do that uh, as opposed to scanning receipts every single time you leave the store. So yep, that is where the project's at. <laughs> I guess this video is a lot less long-winded. That's either probably a good thing. I thought it was a bad thing. I love being long-winded. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But yeah, so that's what we're doing, and that's where we're at. Seems like the best uh, way to go, unless somebody knows. I mean, again, I've spent already, I think, more than enough time trying to evade the bot detection. But it does, uh, I could never get anything. Like, I would be able to get it to work, but it would only work for a little bit. And then it would stop working. So I'm just over it. Doesn't seem like it would be a consistent, you know, um, robust way to do things so I'm just not gonna do it like that I'm just gonna do a half and half and hopefully it works um I guess we'll find out if it doesn't I don't care we'll just learn a bunch of stuff about Chrome extensions so all right I'm off to work